delicious. Hello, and welcome to another Beyond Shakespeare first look exploring session. Yeah, yes. Um, I'm your host, Eric Kalula, and these are our wonderful readers for today. This is the second part of the um, reading for A Challenge for Beauty by Thomas Hayward. If you really want us to explain the plot, just go back to the first recording of this because it's too complicated and there's a lot of stuff. Even we don't really fully know where it's going, so we're excited. We are starting with Act 2, Scene 3. And um, first, I should probably introduce the wonderful readers in this room <laughs> before I forget. Uh, reading the part of King Sebastian and Ferrer as we have. Alan in Suffolk. Playing Queen Isabella, Helena, and Petrocell. So basically all the beautiful women in this group. <laughs> um, hi, I'm Lynn. I'm coming to you from the Northwestern United States. And Scooter, of course. Um, <laughs> so he's not on the screen. He's too big. <laughs> um, uh, playing, um, sorry, reading, uh, Centella or Centella or Centella. We still don't get the pronunciation. Valadura and Valadura, sorry. Yeah, Lois in London. Uh, reading Pineda, a clown, and Manhurst, we have. Rachel in Canada. And reading Bonavida, Aldana, and Rosara, and our newbie for the session, <laughs> we have. Uh, I'm Ian, and I'm from the Peak District. Ooh, and I'm... I'm... You're, I'm your host, Eric Carulla, and I'm very excited because there are more of us today, and I'm curious to see how this plot unfolds. So without further ado, Act 2, Scene 3. Enter Sebastian, Isabella, Contella, or Gentella, Pineda, with other attendants and followers. Most divine lady in the late exile <laughs> of your depraver, Bonavida, how do you applaud my justice? Why, as justice. To have done less should have disgraced me more than all your worth could merit. Oh, who doubts that? Uh, he were not worthy to be styled a prince, or to partake that goodness got in you, that should have let slip such proud arrogance without severest rigor. Troth, I wonder in what remote clime the poor exile treads, or in what place he hopes to find that peace his impudence does, durst boast of. <laughs> he perhaps traveled to Arabia's Felix, and from thence to bring the phoenix thither. Really should then have kept his country, if a phoenix live. You make Spain blessed Arabia. I remember there lived a Spanish princess of our name, and Isabella too, and not long since, who from her palace window, steadfastly gazing upon the sun, her hair took fire, some augurs held it as a prodigy. I'd rather, I rather think she was of she was Latona's brood, and that Apollo courted her bright hair, else envying that her tresses put down his, he scorched them off with envy. Nor dare I, from her derived, expose me to his beams, least as he burns the phoenix in her nest, made of the sweetest aromatic wood, either in love or envy, he agreed to use the light combustion upon me. Ooh, a thing much to be feared. Then, royal lady, might I advise you keep out of the sun and walk still in the shade? By proof we see such meteors oft to take fire. Alas, poor lord, to see what thy bold rashness brings thee to... This doesn't make any sense. To see no. what thy bold rashness brings thee to... Thee with two E's. Yeah, thee, to that... No, thou art the two. To wander through the world to find out a black swan to rival us thou seekest the thing that is not and thy rashness hath justly forced thine exile uh enter a lord who i forgot to give out and apparently i'm reading um fairest of creatures bring you i bring you news lord bonavida has returned and new arrived at court art thou short so most well, certain royal princess <laughs> To his death, if he come <laughs> empty hand. But if he sped, but if sped, then he redeems his exile. Blind and dull. Have plenty bred a surfeit in you, then. 
or have you taken possession of that treasure you know not how to value to the worth? But though you cannot, we can rate ourselves. Perhaps despair hath brought him back to offer his desperate life, which, if with submission, repentance, and some due acknowledgement, may in our grace find pardon, go admit him. Now let's prepare our eyes, for he no question hath brought o'er some rare creature. Take your stands. Let's have full. Uh, let's have of her full view. Enter Lord Bonavita and the clown. All the delights of earth and joys above forever crown your temples. Welcome, Bonavida. How sped you in your journey? Ah, uh, that success I had in expectation, royal sir. I am now possessed of, really. We have found her. Whom? Oh, pride of nature and of love, beauty and virtue in most high contention, which should it exceed each other. Why, I can assure you, we have her to show, and such a peace. Peace you? What country? England. What place there? Of their chief cities, the, metrop the metropolis, London. Ay, and the fairest there, one so fair that all Bartleby Fair could not match her again. We have no tongue for thee. But we have a tale for you, if you will give us the hearing. What name? Helena. And of what parentage? Noble by birth, yet not so high decreed as her great virtues merit, and her means to counterpoise her beauty nor her means to counterpoise her beauty. Yet we have her, and wait and measure with her, to put down all the black-browed wenches in Spain for a face and physiognomy. That praetor peace there! I hope, when travellers have light upon a rich purchase, it is lawful for them to brag of their commodity. We may imagine one most beautiful, but how to rank with us? With any lady, Europe or Asia yields them pardon, lady. I hope, I hope, without the least offence to you. Perhaps she's fair. What instance can you give that she's of such approved virtue? Passing thousands. I will insist in one. At my departure, only one ring I left with her uh, in change, which she the living, which if she living part with, lend or give till my return. I'll hold myself disgraced, her her ever more dis her ever more disparaged. In exchange, she did bestow on me this carcanet, which I as long shall keep. Pray, let me see it, madam. I dare expose you to my life, then much more to this. Tis a most costly jewel, worthy a prince's wearing. I can assure you, lady, there was a ring and a thing exchanged upon the bargain. But where's this rare one? Come, produce her straight to make her the court's wonder. Pardon, lady, she's yet in her own country, but that but that carcanet can quickly fetch her over. Pardon, villain. And base impostor, live there, such a creature, would not thy pride have brought her to full view? But this illusion seconded the first, doubles the pun seconding the first, doubles thy punishment. Hence with him to prison, more worthy of the block, abuse us first, and then deride us after. Royal sir, if suffer me to swallow this disgrace, you underprize me doubly. I spoke it, and it shall stand. Yet hear me, royal sir. Away with him. Then hear me, noble lady. Shall we still be tormented? If you deny me my freedom, grant me th that which I more prize. My, pretitious, my precious carcanet, that which you with no justice can, can, de can detain. Into some loathsome dungeon hurry him, unworthy the day's comfort. Bear this scorn. You have sentenced justly. Please you, sir, a little to leave me in my private solitude. I shall not be long from you. Take your pleasure, for your content is ours. 
exist a bastion with attendants and followers. Cantella and Pineda. Royal madam. I have a project for you. If you effect, you shall endear me ever. What's in men shall not be in us scanted. You have heard the country and the place of her abode. Thither I'll furnish you. Spare for no cost. Our treasure lies open to you. Get that ring. By any slight or craft, be it possible that gold will do it, corrupt her. Use all means, all friends, devices, plots, stratagems to bring some token of her falseness back. Further instructions you shall have with you. Meantime, prepare for travel. And, or die, or bring you news of her in chastity. Enough. You and ours, you are ours. Part with this carcinet, carcinet. Hmm. No, not for a world. I have project two in that. Be rivaled by a petty English dame. Knew I the large earth did my e equal give. Rather than brook her sice, I'd cease to live. And they all exit. Pro presumably, like, Bonavida and the clan have been dragged off to prison before this. It doesn't make sense for them to exit now, but anyway. Yeah. Um, I, oh. e either then or they left with Sebastian. In, yeah, like, yeah. Or something. Yeah, yeah. No, they kind of overheard this, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it was basically what we kind of what we predicted, except we predicted yeah. that he would lose it in in a, in some sort of, you know, battle or uh, yeah. storm or something. Yeah, but it's, yeah, the queen is so conceited. You wouldn't think she'd have to stoop stoop to something like that. I mean, she would surely be assuming that as soon as Helena was brought in, everybody would say, "Nah, nah, she's not all that great." Look at you. I mean, really, you know. Yeah, she's insecure a bit, maybe just a yeah. little bit. Yeah. Any, any, Alan? Sorry, any thoughts? Yeah, I mean, her lifting the stone is, you know, I think entirely consistent with the characters exposed so far. Yeah, you know, um, yeah. oh, there's something pretty over there. I'm having it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, why on earth Sebastian keeps putting up with this? I mean, he's depicted as, you know, well, the really most spineless. I, I, I suspect yeah, he's I probably know. in need of a thumb-shaped toupee. <laughs> Maybe the, the, uh, the clown. Uh, yeah, sorry, sorry. sorry. The clown finally got a, a tongue tail rude joke in. <laughs> yes. yeah. uh, or, oh, also, yeah. as as is the one with clowns, got to speak truth to power as well. Yes, yeah. yeah. But he he did in the previous scene with <laughs> Isabella and her mother. He had a moment of like, oh, I, I can totally vouch for him. Like, Helen, uh, for, Helen or her he, mother. Yeah. yeah, sorry, Helena. Yeah, um, and he did the same thing here, except obviously it didn't work, uh, because they had enough of them. <laughs> uh, Lynn, uh, yeah, the the question of like why doesn't Isabella just let Helena come to court and say and have everyone basically all of her sycophants say, nah, she's not prettier. I mean, that is a good question, um, but I think, um because I have an unhealthy obsession with genre, that genre answers that question. In the world of romance, in the world of fairy tale, <laughs> beauty is objective. Yeah. So um, uh, they wouldn't be able to say, no, she's not prettier because of the world th that the play takes place in. Yeah, I mean, I'm because I mean, that goes all the way back to Greek myth, doesn't it? So uh, may it makes perfect sense in, in the context of what we know of a story in that kind of in that particular genre yeah well i i guess also technically in in greek myth you know beauty can be bought in a way like sort of i mean like yeah. you know the whole paris helen thing uh, pa uh paris aphrodite thing um he picked her because of what he wanted not because of yeah what, um yeah but yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway moving on alan sorry yeah <laughs> i only, i think we actually had an explicit uh reference in the previous session to the golden app and apples and the judgment of paris yep true uh, yeah it's like you had um there was there was a whole exposition about how if she, if she was um she, like troy would still be standing if she was around if, lynn yeah yeah I, I don't know i'd like eric's takes on this because he's our he's our myth person um i kind of get the feeling that the 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 golden, you know, discourse golden apple for the fairest. Um, um, the reason that that created a problem was that 
it's um amongst the three goddesses there isn't a clear winner that they're objectively they're equally fair um mm. and uh and yep. in the you know and as, as the myth continues after the birth of helen helen is like in the story in the world of the story objectively the most beautiful woman in the world like you could make that judgment um yeah, yeah. So I, I i still think that it's like because at least among humans um uh in the world of 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 myth or, or of, of um folk tale there is such a thing as the most beautiful woman in the world yeah yeah it's i mean it's you, you getting into snow white as well in that mm -hmm. territory aren't you? Yeah. for the fairest and you know for uh, who yeah. is the fairest yeah. of the all and yeah 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 well, what i found interesting was the mention of the black swan i was like wait has this <laughs> is this a story now <laughs> already <laughs> um because obviously she thinks of herself as the white swan in this so yeah I mean, isabella yeah. thinks of herself as the white swan I don't know. I'm intrigued. I don't know. I um. I mean, I don't know where the where the the whole mythology of Swan Lake comes from. So yeah, I mean, um, way back there. If it's way back there in European folklore, then it makes sense. I, I think she's being snarky. I think she's being sarcastic. Like a black swan could be prettier than a than a white swan. Like so, um. I think it's just basically like <laughs> a little casual racism bubbling up there. Like, oh, black is always less well, beautiful than white. And she's just being, yeah, she's being sarcastic. Yeah. Yeah. I guess. Um, I did have a point to make there, but then I forgot. Uh, sorry. Um, Yeah, so I don't know, is Black Swan a thing by this point? Like, uh, I mean, we have a ring, we have a car carcanet or carcinet, or uh, I don't know how to pronounce this word. Um, I, I, I don't carcinet. know the etymology of it. So, um, I mean, it could be if it if it's French, it's carcinet. If it's, I think it's carcanet though. With C, the C A has to be a hard C. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have to admit though, the whole like. Talking I mean, about her as a piece, I really don't like, but I think that's just me being yeah. modern. I, 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 also, I, I, yeah. I, I think in, in terms of the, you know, the, a woman was viewed as a chattel in those days. So the objectification of women as an object to be owned is kind of intrinsic in in the whole, in the world, in the world outside the play. So, yeah, true. But you kind of don't expect to hear it from a queen, do you? Uh, I guess. Um, anyway, well, I think, maybe yeah. that's why. I think maybe. it's contemptuous. I mean, uh, Isabella says it with contempt. Uh, this piece, you know. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Piece, uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I don't think why? Isabella has it. actually displayed any regal tendencies, <laughs> other, other than being spoiled bitch. Yeah. 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 Basically. Yeah. No, she's absolutely dreadful. I mean, unbelievably yeah. dreadful. It seems yeah, yeah. yeah. She's, she's, she's definitely yeah a a a, a, a folktale villain. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And that was that. I mean, okay, this is you know our first scene in this video, but I feel like the, we're already through Act Two. So like Act One, Act Two have already ended, and now we're entering Act Three, Scene One. Mm. So mm. without further ado, let us go and see what Valadura is up to. And or, along with Ferris, mm. go go out. I'm guessing that's a way of dress. Yeah, anyway. it mean, yeah, it means oh. he's really splendidly dressed, as opposed to being in, in rags or whatever he was wearing last time we saw him. Mm -hmm. Sir, from a bondman, you have cast me into a free mold, almost new made me. Yet what your purpose is, I cannot gather. I am still yours. It's your intention to prank me up, to make me fit the deck. Or feed me till I be in some good plight, the better to fat your own revenge. What I purpose to myself, I still keep in myself. What you have found hitherto speak, and when you find yourself pinched, then freely complain. The face of your kind visage looks yet yeah, looks smooth. I spy in it no wrinkle. But my friend, how have you dealt with him? As he deserves, no further. Pray, inquire him. 
if he perish, I am swept from off the earth too. My sister, he next my heart, it's unmovable. Pray, what service will you command me now? None. Yet some love I shall entreat with all a, a grace from you. I have a mistress unto whom I purpose a friendly visitation, to which duty I entreat you as a witness. I am yours. Enter Aldana and Petrosella. I hear say Bonavides returned. And intends to visit thee, but having failed in all his foreign purposes, he means upon those pillars as Hercules did upon his, to write non-ultra, thinks thou not so, girl? My further honour still. <laughs> See what a virtue lives in the Spanish continent, especially among yellow-haired winches. Jason, when he went in quest of the Golden Fleece, found it in Spain. There's a moral in that. And that great Hercules, so talked on amongst the Greeks, after all his travels through Asia, Africa, and Europe, coming to this country, into the island called Callis, he that, unless poets lie, lay with fifty ladies in one night and got nine and forty boys, Mary, I must tell you, the laugh was a girl. Was there so tired with one was so there tired with one woman that he gave over all his travels, retired home to his country like a man taken down, and in memory of that adventure, where he reared his pillar, writ the most melancholy motto you you speak of, no further. My daughter is an apt and witty lass. I know her apprehensive and well-brained, my further honour still. Noble madam, I have brought a stranger and an Englishman to give you visitation. A worthy stranger, a bold villain to my further honour still. Uh, to whom, Petrosella, uh, as to a gentleman to me entered, I beg from you all the best compliment due unto my long service. Why, what's he? Uh, uh, this man, do you mean? Yes, he that follows there. A uh, fellow, to whom? He hath not his in Spain. <laughs> Nay, I might have took a larger bound and not have passed my limit. Fellow, villain? Yes, or companion. <laughs> Paint me out a worthy, else he is such to none. This was the man I met at sea and fought with. Our encounter was all in smoke and fire, so hotly fought that in that fog we had no further light than what our lint staves gave. Our decks flowed blood, which through the portholes rung, and dyed the sea into a deep vermilion, yet still fought. But never with a braver opposite. Did Englishmen try with fire? He speaks well. Both to their honest still. When powder and bullet and men withal grew scant, for scarce was any left to the present purpose serviceable, both bottoms ready through the violent leaks to split and founder, we then hailed, hung flags, and grew to composition. Which I begged. Oh, sir, it came first from me, and this proposed that both our ships, goods, lives, and people might not be in the sea engraved and swallowed up, both from man's tongue and thought, that such rich prizes might be to one survivor, the two captains to try it out by combat. On a still. This nobly he accepted. Faith's new pawned, hostages given, two worthy seconds choosed, lots cast, whose decks should be the appointed lists, uh, to mine it fell. He boarded me to fight. From whom I came, apparelled thus in wounds. It seems then he's a cutter. Whose scars still mark me his. Were I not yours? Though not so many, yet more deeply carved, with greater danger and expense of blood than ever dropped from these. Short-tailed make, vanquished I was, he, victor. And when all lading and lives were his, nay, even mine too, lay prostrate at his mercy, with a magnificence equal to any prince, he should at all this we know, nor do we desire to hear over again what was before related. You spoke more in his praise than you have done, which it may be, which it may be is your purpose. I find nothing. 
but may well come within the compass of his merit and my belief. Lady, I am glad you are so possessed of him. And do you think him such? I think you would gladly sell whom you have so lately bought, else you would never have spoke him thus, if you have any such purpose. It may be there be those that but surrender up your bargain would be glad to help you to your money. I came with but one gyve on my leg, fastened upon me in his courtesy. But since I looked on, upon your lady's eyes, now I am doubly threatened. "'Tis neglect, a palpable neglect. "'She loves me not. "'It shall be so. "'I will be boorish and sullen. "'Sir, you this day have brought me to a fight "'that more contents me than the wealth of Spain, "'this matchless lady. "'My mistress, whom, if thou wilt court for me "'and win unto my wishes... "'I, sir, do it? "'Yeah, by the love thou owest me. "'Do you pause?' If ever I deserve the name of friend, or hopest hereafter I may merit of thee, make it thy sole endeavours. Doubly captived, honour should still proceed, love. Sir, I will, though I to cure another myself kill. Uh, yeah, the exit. Um, okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. Just happened um <laughs> i mean it, it felt kind of predictable as in like lynn had predicted that he would be really nice to Valdor, uh, to Fer like Valdor would be really nice to ferrers mm. yeah i yeah. yeah i mean the guy's an idiot as far as i can see but he seems to have thought that you know in the earlier scene with petrocella that by describing this fight and the fact that he was wounded and came back from it that he would somehow make her love him and in fact uh her reaction was just to think you, you can't be that good if you lost. Uh, uh -huh. And, uh, you know, the guy that made all these wounds in you was obviously better than you. Now, he, then he's brought the guy and uh, given another account. And Ferrers has said all sorts of good things about him. And, and she's still totally unimpressed. And now he's asked Ferrers to woo her. And I can only assume that he intends to humiliate her somehow through this. But in fact, Ferrers appears to be attracted to her anyway. So you can sort of guess how this is going to go. Yeah. Yeah, it I don't think this is a very good idea on on, on um Valdora's part. Mm. I, I, meanwhile, I think her dad, like Petrosella's dad, is probably trapped in like some version of Milan where he thinks that honor is the most important thing. Oh God, it's a one note part, honestly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But it still I feels noticed. hilarious. Like he's got a sort of <laughs> not coda, but like something he's returning to. Mm. Got this little twitch about that goes, Oh, my honor! Oh, my honor! Oh, my honor! Like, yeah, oh, yeah, all right, your bloody honor. We get it, <laughs> <laughs> but it's kind of funny to think that he might be standing like on by on you know, like stage wise, he might be on the side of this, like on, on the fringe of this conversation, just going, My honor, yes, mm -hmm. he's a, he's a hanger on, definitely. Mm. Maybe you could have a blackboard there and have various names on it and then be ticking every time it's you're my honor, his honor, both their honors. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And welcome back to our mini uh break <laughs> between things. Um as uh I would uh, act three scene two, I would like to ask uh, Helene uh yeah. I would like to ask Rachel to read Helena in this scene. So enter Helena with her maid, Rosara. How long is it since those gentlemen of Spain arrived here? Uh, three days since, lady. Came there no letters along with them from Spain? Some note there? Not, a ma not to my end. Has Bonavid, that, that name methinks revives me. I dare not tax him of neglect, and yet I am very pleasant this morning. Let's have a song, Rosara. I would have the subject love, and yet modest too, and yet a little wanton, yet chaste and innocent as dreams of coals. And here's thou? Where's Bonavita's name vouchsafes to grace the ditty? There let music speak in its smoothest phrase, and most courtly singing, stay, thou art a jewel too precious to be washed with. Thou art given to dear purpose, honored with this. 
lie there. A song during which she washes. But it is done. And I have done a dryer. Oh, how am I blessed? Occasion, I thank thee. Enter, exit the maid with uh, basin and ring. Thy absence, Bonavid, makes each minute seem an hour, and thy delay makes infant time look old. And were it not for this pledge of thy affection. Rosaria, maid? Your pleasure, madam. Um, so she must have entered at some point with the empty basin. Reach me my ring. What ring, lady? Just ask that question. That of the basin. Uh, trust me, madam, I saw none. Speak not again upon thy life. Where is the wa the water? What's well, right now, madam? And, and with it, I fear the ring, but I'll... Uh... Um, Find it again, is. or lose thyself, in inconsiderate girl. How are my hopes betrayed th though through thy rash negligence? Was my blood pleasant for this? My thoughts joyful for this? And now hast found it? And, uh, and to reserve, maybe. Uh, Lynn's back. Nor yeah. shall I, nor ever shall I fear, madam. Nor, nor ever shall I fear, madam. Oh, nor ever shall I fear, madam. Madam, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> how, how never? Then lose thyself. My hopes are lost forever. Torches and lights there. Find it again or never see me more. And she exists. Your will's a law which I intend not suddenly to infringe. And have I got my best happiness? Now to my Don of Spain, the next news you'll hear of me is a ladyship at least. But fie on this idleness. Stand on thorns till I'll be in action. And Rosario exists. Welcome wow. back, Lynn. Can you hear us? <laughs> You see it. Yes. Yeah, I, I don't know what went wrong. What's happened? Gosh. Um, the ring has disappeared by magic. How, how um, stupid. She takes it off to wash her hands, and then Rosara goes off with it. But clearly, between the acts, Rosara has been corrupted rather quickly by these uh, visitors who have been charged by Isabella to get hold of that ring. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I, I've, I've just seen ahead to the first three lines of the next scene. Yes, she has. <laughs> uh, yeah. 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 Yeah, uh, Rachel. Okay. Sorry. Well, I, I think we are to understand that ser servants are eminently corruptible, right? So, I mean, it it, de it depends. A a lot of servants in other early modern dramas are are you know risk their own lives um in to disobey their masters because it's the yeah. right thing to do. I mean, the honorable servant is a trope, so. Uh, yeah, actually, you know, the corruptible servant is not actually a pattern in early modern drama that I know of. Um, agree, disagree, other... Yeah. Well, other, also, other considering the other servants... Are available. Considering the other servants and servants slash serving people in this play are more... are basically the opposite of Rosario. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. But actually, um, one trouble in this scene is that the uh, T-H-E should, in many cases, be T-H-E-E. -E, and... Yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, the, the, mm -hmm. there are a couple of places where uh, where people are addressing. Uh, I mean, I think Helen is addressing the ring when she decides it's too precious to be washed with. She must have thought of this before. I mean, she's been she's had this thing for ages. And then uh, and then Rosara, uh, I think, how am I blessed occasion? I thank thee. She means, oh, good. I have a chance to steal this ring. Yeah. Uh, and then at the end. Uh, and have I got thee? My best mm -hmm. happiness, that must be thee, the ring. Uh, and then she says now to my down of Spain, I mean, apparently uh, one of these guys has promised to marry her and make her a lady. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah. also, like, I think the exits and entrances here are a bit mixed up because there's no, like, it's clear that she's obviously looking around the room, maybe? Not necessarily looking around, mm. like, in, in the world. Of, I, I don't know, because there's, like, uh, thrown out, madam, and with it, I fear the ring. But well, I'll, and then she exits, and then she comes back, and then she exits again. And then I again. mean, don't don't forget that you know all the hunting is fake. Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. So mm -hmm. you know, she she could just be kind of stepping out and going. Seems long enough. Yeah, yeah. Mm, yeah. But yeah. then I guess it makes sense because if she does say, you know, um, 
the thrown out with the like where is the water uh, thrown out then obviously mm. kind of yeah um, she but has I to think... go outside and look for it otherwise there's problems yeah, yeah. this is actually perfunctory actually as a way of uh, it getting is. Rid of yeah it's really it's really it's sort of it's sort of anticlimactic it's sort of disappointing that uh, that they get the ring away from her so easily and mm. it, yeah it she should put up more of a fight i mean yeah yeah um I mean, when when she's finally confronted with this by Bonavita, and he says, "You promised never to part with it," and she's like, "Well, I took it off to wash my hands," I, and he's like, "What?" I mean, <laughs> yeah, like that that's like treating it like an ordinary object. Uh, yeah, so she she kind of broke her promise by by being so negligent. I feel like. Yeah, but also he broke his by handing or giving away the car ah, so Kirk that's the point. point yeah that. yeah so they're both yeah. in the wrong in a way i yeah, know it's, it's an interesting scene really casual yeah. yeah but clearly this suggests that they've done this before as in like she's like rosara knows that she's going to take it off so, to wash her hands otherwise there's no point yeah. uh, if you'll excuse me, I've just got to um, step away for a second. Yeah, no worries. No. My car, my car's in for an MOT, so I, oh, I think the I think the garage is just called, and my mother's speaking to them now. So bear with me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it just seems like a lot of the, this play a bit as if the the author could hardly be bothered. You know. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I but mean, then, it, it yeah. does have a little bit of a feeling. Oh God, someone's asked me to write something. Oh God, it's due next week. <laughs> yeah, but it's interesting how she she's like Rosara's. Um, how do you say? It? Like she she's gone this far enough to to lie about it, sort of. Because mm. she asks if there are any letters along from Spain, mm. not like with the gen. I know, it's, yeah. Mm. I feel like this scene needs to be in, in a different place in the play, but I don't know, maybe this is me. Yeah. Well, clearly a lot of lots happened before this scene that we're not really mm -hmm. told about. Um, but we do know that Isabella has sent two guys off to get this ring by any means. And so I suppose you can just infer that they've been working on Rosara rather than on Helena, which probably makes sense. And mm -hmm. it's just so easy. I mean, yeah, in three yeah, days. It's too also. Easy. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Yes, it's well, Haywood Haywood did brag about the quantity, not the quality of his writing. So, <laughs> yeah. yes, this is true. Um, but then it has like some ups and downs where you've got like amazing scenes, and then yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's uneven in the in that way. But yeah, um, I suppose we can move on. Besides, like as far as I know, Ian is not in the next scene, so we uh. will be covered. Oh wait, no, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Um, well, I I can read in until um, yeah. so, until he returns. Um, Act right. three, scene three. Enter Pineda and Centel Centella. No. Uh, you find her pliant. <laughs> As a thing of wax, never was thrifty trader more willing to to put up a silk commodity than she was to truck for her maidenhead. I admire her forwardness. <laughs> Call off the animal. She takes her entrance just at her cue. Step you aside for fear of suspicion. Enter Rosara. Oh, Master Oracle, sweet Master Oracle. How thrives your project? Works it into fashion? Beyond hope or expectation, was there not a don of Spain here to speak with me? Uh, no, no, I assure you. You have met him then? Yes, and so met him, sweet... Uh, M. Oracle? Master. Master. Oh, sweet master, or I am bound to you forever. And Rosara confers with Centella, and Pineda enters, may maybe from being aside. Anyway, yeah, um, Pineda's apparently been doing all sorts of things between the scenes. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> this, by my direction, is the place the la the labor in vain. And here, spite of delay, she has prevented my haste. You see, I keep my word sweet. And that's somewhat strange in the gallant of your rank. 
Uh, but usual in a lover, may we presume upon the trust of this gentleman? Why do you not know him? Oh, strange, quite this master oracle man. Trust him, and I had a maiden head to spare. I dare trust the innate in bed with him. Uh, sir, though both strangers, yet fates past and fortunes to come are better known to me than yourselves. Uh, have you got the ring? Um, Ian, would you like to take over? <clears throat> <laughs> bear with me while i find the line <laughs> uh have i have i not all right oh have i have i not the answer is why i had for it sweet i am come to make it tender my promise the like purpose the like purpose bring we sir you have my heart already. For which take mine, and that ring to boot, and Monsieur Pin, welcome as elf to the house of sickness. And now where, how, what, when? Uh, how is it, sir? I see a sudden sign of alteration in you. And can you blame me? My blood chills, my nerves faint. I am abused. My attendant demon prompts me. I am abused. Where? Well, by whom? Here, and by thee, by both a false imposture and a common strumpet. Do you mistrust my honesty? Or my art? Both. They are both dissembled, and my noble purpose frustrate. This is not the ring. Not the ring? And you, the woman my fate points at, how simple innocence may be played upon. How not the ring? Return it back then. No, I will keep it to witness and evidence against you, for instantly I expect the severest punishment law can inflict upon impostures of this kind. Exit Peninda. Disparagement to my art. Have you brought a false ring? R the right on my faith is I hope to be a lady, the right. Huh, I'm proud of that. Huh, this trial was not amiss, though. But, oh, Master Oracle, how have you deceived me? I was deceived myself. I, I see my error now, a mistake in the sign. Uh, I sought for Mercury in one house, and he lodged in the next. I must change my lodging. The, the city stones will grow too hot for me. I must go cool my feet in the suburbs. The all and only mistake was in the sign. Oh, the labour in vain, a fire on the sign, and you too. My donna turned to this. My preferment to this, a lady in the morning and a beggar before noon? He is quick work indeed, a cunning man, a cunning rogue. There it be my luck to, luck to see thee peacock through a pillory, as one of the cast limbs of your cursed crew did not so long ago. That hangman shall have you by the ears for this. But I'll be back and lay my case open to my lady. Your only curses, and now aboard for Spain, her shame's our honour, and her loss, our gain. Exit Centella and Pineda, who seems to be... I well, think... he exited earlier, so it doesn't make sense, but, um, yeah. It doesn't make much sense anyway. Something, a lot has been going on that we... I think there must be a missing scene. Uh, this is just too complicated. I mean, clearly, I think what's happening is that uh, Centella's been disguised as a some sort of necromancer, and Pineda is... Uh, a kind of Spanish grandee, and they've talked Rosara into the idea that uh, that he will marry her, and this is uh, sort of foretold by the stars. And you know, Centella's now saying he got it wrong, and then they get the ring from her, but don't give her any reward because they pretend it's the wrong one. Yeah, yeah, what uh, jerks. Yeah, <laughs> men are assholes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, pretty much. They're here, um, <laughs> I'm I'm asking, I'm not sure that there is a missing scene. I think it is basically two guys pulling a con job mm. and part of the thing is that they keep changing the ground rules so damn quickly that everybody mm. gets confused yeah. including yeah. Rosara who's yeah. probably not a mastermind candidate anytime soon I, I mean uh, perhaps um, Centella and Pineda are just as kind of scrabbling around mm. oh yeah they're, they're, but... they're busking it yeah. You know, yeah. It, uh, right, okay, we've now got what we want. Now, how the hell do we get out of this without actually paying for it? Yeah. 
Um, you know, I mean, they they are prototype scam artists. Mm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yes. It might be possible to to play it in such a way as to make sense of that. Um, but all this about I must change my lodging. Uh, you know, I uh, I didn't. I suppose that the costumes would make it clear that Centella is is Master Oracle, and he's been going under this name. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think they they've been trading under false identity. They're probably disguised, and mm -hmm. we all know about early modern disguises. They are. Absolutely impenetrable. Oh yeah, you know yes. they're they're, they're as impenetrable as a pair of glasses are to Superman. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. I, I guess yeah. it's also that thing of um, I, I suspected based on like what happened was, uh, that um, Centella had met Rosara separate, separately to Pineda had. Mm. So basically, he said he had this moment of like introducing the the possibility of Pineda. Um, being a dawn from Spain, whereas um, Centella sort of goes, he pretends to be her advisor, her counselor for some reason. Mm. I don't know why she would trust him, but yeah. I mean, te yeah. technically, in fact, both, both given what we've been had from the descriptions of the Portuguese of the Spanish court, both are dons or mm. senior courtiers at least, because they have yeah. been established with a confidential mission for the Queen. Hmm. Yeah. So they, they, you know they are high status playing at being low status. Hmm. Yeah. Well, Pineda is playing it. Being maybe he's yeah. playing being what he is. I mean, he comes on as a Spanish don because yeah. Rosario thinks for some reason that the reward for her stealing this ring will be to marry him. Hmm. Mm. Yeah, I'm wondering if this is like a sort of game of chess thing where we're missing the point because of historical context or not. <laughs> Um, yeah, and you kind of yeah. wonder whether there are, you know, there's only one in control and two are pawns. Yeah. Yeah. This is true. Mm. We should. Yeah. Feel, yeah. Sorry. Uh, perhaps Ian. there is a, a, a thing between Centella and Rosara. I mean, Centella does say he was deceived myself. Mm. Yeah. Well, that may so be. May, maybe Pineda played them both off. Or maybe he's just play, using play that as an excuse. Yeah. No, I, I, yeah, it could be. Because that bit about I, the I, sign, I think he's told her somehow that the stars have prophesied that this will happen and it's all gone wrong, but now he realizes that he was looking at the wrong sign or that, uh, yeah. uh, what was it, the planet isn't where he thought it was. Yeah. Mm. No, I think it's a it's a dumb thing between Pineda and and. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the other guy's name begins with a, a C. It's like, um, we'll get the ring, and then Pineda, who was supposed to be the, the suitor, mm -hmm. finds the two of them together and assumes, oh, you're a strumpet, you're cheating on me with this necromancer, um, I'm leaving you. So he gets out of the, yeah. the, the, out of the deal because he pretends to suspect her of, um, uh, of infidelity. Um, and then um, the um, and, and then the other guy's like, oh, so you got the wrong ring, but I'm gonna keep it anyway. I guess I just didn't read the stars very well. I guess I'm not a very good auger. Uh, and and then he leaves. So I th I think that whole scene was mm -hmm. as confusing as it is for us. I think it was a done thing between the two Spanish courtiers. Mm. Yeah, yeah, like uh, almost like good no, cop bad right, cop, yeah. except not yeah. quite. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm intrigued yeah, it's, now. it's pretty <laughs> desperate. I mean, they've got enough money, they could at least have paid her instead of yeah. like that. Yeah. I mean, they, they, they Although she might not have done it for cash, she she would do it for prestige, huh. not for cash. You know, could be. Yeah. So. Yeah. I, I I'm intrigued by this now. I, I kind of want to yeah. work, workshop this scene. Rob, if you're watching, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> but also, if you're watching this and want to suggest what is going on between these characters in this scene, please go ahead. Uh, that's what the comment section is for. Um, yeah. So I think we should probably move on. <laughs> Act 3, Scene 4. Enter Manhurst with a false beard in his hand. <laughs> The Spaniard's noble, beyond thought or expectation noble. Instead of a dungeon, he has furnished me with means and sent me home with a letter of his purposed friendship to, to my friend. And now, though freed from both, both from Turk and Spaniard, I, I, 
I live a slave to a more cruel nation than both, my own countrymen, for surety ship and debt, diseases that may a gallant, that many a gallant lies sick to death on. I've taken hold on, on me, have taken hold on me. And though I know it improbable and partly ridiculous that a false beard and a fantastical habit should mar my creation and make me a new creature, it is past current with some of in this place. And I may be the bolder venter on it. First then, to my friend's sister, the young lady Ferrers, I think her virtuous, but with all know her for a woman and dare not trust my liberty in so weak a stomach. In this disguise then, I'll address me to her presently. And Manhurst exits, uh, trying to possibly unfold this plot in England, I guess. Um, so, like, we've got a C plot now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, technically, I think but this is the B plot not... trying to crash into the A plot, but I'm not sure. We'll yeah. see. Act yeah. 3, scene 5, then, before we, we forget okay. ourselves. Enter Helena and Rosanna. Thou tellest me wonders, cheated of my ring by a cunning man and a crafty Spaniard. The cousinage was premeditate. A Spaniard, was he? Still some don or nobleman at least. He wore very good clothes. So may a cheat or a pick purse. The better body, the plainer the habit. Painted clothes were devised for ruined feeling and sluttish walls. It's the apparel of the mind crowns thee within noble. Then was he a very beggar to cheat for so poor a trifle as a ring? It was not so much the value of the thing as to impoverish the oath of the wearer. Some crafty sinner had a hand in it, or might be, or it might be Bonavita's plot to try my loyalty, and yet it relishes too much of baseness to come from so noble an author. <laughs> However, shall I see this, turn coward, and like a falling tower, bury my beauty in my own ruins? No, rather like the glorious sun, dissolve and scatter the clouds of infamy. It is resolved, all after them to Spain, your purpose, Rosara? Uh, to give you my best attendance to the last minute, please, your ladyship, accept it. And freely pardon me. Receive a few directions for our voyage. And enter Manhurst, disguised. Yes, this disguise will do it. <laughs> and for my friend, her noble brother's sake, I'll make the first tender of my service to her. Save you, lady. You're welcome, sir. Would you anything with us? impart a secret to you to a woman <laughs> by no means we want discretion to keep our own strange had i a secret concerned my life i'd trust it in a woman's bosom to choose and think i saved it up safe too <laughs> your reason sir because no wise man will overlook for any matter of worth in such a weak building a fellow of bold aspect, and such one, were I assured of his carriage, as would much avail me in my voyage, art willing to serve? Mine own turn with all my heart. This fashions to my wishes. What if your ladyship do want a servant? I am your man, your first man too, and such a man as know the world. And such a man I do I want. Have you been in Spain then? Did hear no talk of an Englishman there? One Ferrer's. And one Manhurst, his friend. They are both prisoners and lie only for ransom. My brother prisoner, this news wings me for, for my voyage. Are you for any adventures, lady? Thy bad news enforces me. I'll make that my color, at least that gentleman is my brother, and cost it the last penny of my dower, I'll not see him want. I'll furnish our voyage instantly. As generous as he is valiant, t'were cowardice in me to dishearten her. We must be gallant. What habit were I best to travel in? Let me see. A Spanish slop? Good easy wear? But, but that, like chambermaids, they are loose and somewhat too open below. Many thinks your Dutch cassock is a, comel, is a comely wear. It hath been. <laughs> But nowadays it grows shorter and shorter, like your court allowance. Their tailors are good husbands, though they make little or no waste at all. And that makes your gallant stand so much on pawn points. Your button hose is a good wear for courtiers. Why for courtiers? 
because they are full of large promises outward, but lined with narrow, scant performance within. Ah, uh, tis been a good fashion, but tis old. So is all goodness else. We have nothing new but oaths and diseases. No, for my money, give me your substantial English hose, round and somewhat full afore. Now they are, methinks, a little too great. The more the discretion of the landlord that builds them makes room enough for this tenant to stand upright in. He may walk in and out at ease without stooping. But of all the rest, I am clean out of love with your Irish trousers. They are for all the world like a jealous wife, always close to a man's tail. Out of these I will cut and fashion that I shall be new and imitable. Will you follow? Even where fate leads me. We are all her slaves and have no dwellings of our own. Yes, graves. And they exit. What on earth is going on? <laughs> well, lots of cod piece jokes. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, yeah. I feel like the clown has changed places with Manhurst. Um, <laughs> maybe we have a parallel here because the clown didn't have anything to do. Uh, Alan. Yeah, I'm, I was just thinking Manhurst has actually escaped from a boys' company play. <laughs> You know, it, it is back to thirteen-year-old humour again. Yeah. You know, and I mean the the number of bits in there that these days you would have to blue pencil on the grounds of political correctness so would not leave much left to work with. Yeah, yeah but I mean, there are so many plays that have issues, like from yeah, but this, this does seem to be yeah. ODing on them. Yeah, it, it's it's pretty extreme, particularly for something that this is this late. I mean, it's the sort of riff that Manners was doing there is Boys Company thirty years earlier, isn't it? Yeah, true. Uh, well, it's also another of these nationality jokes. We've already had yeah. the Valadora and the oh no, um, Bonavita and the clown doing their thing about women in different countries. Now we've got clothes in different countries. Yeah, you know, he was pretty desperate. Yeah. Um, Where's that barrel? I want to scrape it. Yeah. 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 But also the whole thing about women being weak, weak building, it's just kind of, or a yeah. weak stomach or whatever. Yeah. I, I'm intrigued. Also, there's a problem going, why is he just disguised? Like, surely if he, if <laughs> she is um Farrah's sister that would mean that she would recognize Manhurst uh, mm -hmm. but yeah I guess that's yeah. the idea or or has Manhurst arrived back without resources and been done for debt or something yeah there's, that's what there's he an said. awful lot of potential yeah. backstory that mm -hmm. just isn't evidenced in the in the script that's come down to us mm. yeah. yeah I do you like know, the idea it, that Haywood it, does give them a backstory you know, it, it it's almost like a sort of modern TV drama where you get these sudden jump cuts, and it's only ten minutes after mm -hmm. it's happened that yeah. you suddenly get a clue as to what the blue blazes has happened. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, Lynn, sorry. My guess is he would wanted a disguise because it would be fun, mm. or maybe they'll need to be unrecognizable later for plot reasons. So mm. he makes a so he, he, he creates the the complication that Manhurst, even though he's a decent guy, is over ears in debt. And he wants to go find his best friend's sister, but he doesn't trust her not to turn him into his creditors. Mm -hmm. So he's going to come in disguise to kind of feel her out uh, of what she's like and if, if she's as loyal to her brother's friends as she is to, you know, to kind of get a, a, a beat on her character before he tells her who he really is is because he's afraid she's gonna she's gonna turn him into the authorities and he'll be in prison yeah. for debt. Um because mm -hmm. I think there was probably some kind of reward for that. So um um and, and whether that's just because disguises are fun and he would wanted to throw one in or because Manhurst being not himself is important for the plot later, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But that's the reason. He doesn't want to get turned in for debt. So that's why he doesn't come in his own person. Yeah, um, he he does like. I mean, Haywood does like writing a lot of traveling people. He like wrote like you know uh, the Fair Maid of Bristow, Bristow, yeah, um, the, the West, 
yeah. The Fair Maids of the West. He, he basically Fortune wrote a lot of Fair Maids, the travel. Yeah. Um, Fortune by land and sea. And yeah, uh, uh, yeah and indeed in Edward the Fourth, we've got people uh, aboard ship a couple of times. Mm -hmm. yeah. And yeah, so like Helena trying to go to Spain is just quite um, interesting. I, I, I felt a bit disappointed that um, she forgave um Lazaro so quickly but I think there's a sort of um like I, I don't know if, if she can qualify that I know uh, Ian sorry yeah yeah I, I don't know it kind of you know I it kind of felt to me that um it 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 was yes she did forgive um Rosara fairly easily but um I do think that, you know, Rosara was genuinely indignant about having been used. And so that were, and of course, you know, men. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I guess also she kind of needs someone to help her on her journey to Spain. So like she kind of yeah. goes, okay, you're, I will, I will pardon me, but you have to go get instructions on how to do this. Um, uh, well, I don't know how much Rosara has told her because uh, she could certainly t tell her that the, the you know a couple of Spanish scoundrels uh, cousined her. But does she say that? Well, to, of course, to begin with, I stole your ring. I mean, mm, she yeah. must somehow or other have elided that bit. Yeah. Well, Lynn, sorry, I don't know. You you, you get this. <clears throat> I mean, you get the sensation that this is more a, a recap than a in in a sense than it happening for the first time because it seems like the that. Eleanor's got more information than she talks about in the script. So it is. Yeah. So you, you can see where Rosaria may well have confessed about the ring and she'd done it because, you know, some she'd been swept off her feet by some Spanish don mm -hmm. who turned out to just be a complete and utter pain in the, pain in the backside yeah. um, and a con man. Um, and she's very sorry and she won't do it again. And you know she's a servant. She needs a job. <laughs> yeah, true. That? true. Uh, Lynn, sorry. And and Rosario does say something about and all this for a, a you know a piece of jewelry that's not really even all that valuable. Yeah. So you get the feeling that Rosario doesn't know mm. the significance yeah. of the ring. She just knows it's a well, it's a ring. It's pretty. It looks like this. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So she mm. didn't. She didn't know the 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 consequences. Mm, yeah, what she was doing. So I, that's one of the reasons I think that Helena uh, is able to forgive her. It's like, well, you didn't know how important it was. You thought it was just a piece of jewelry, um, but now you know. Don't do that again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what else? Sorry. Yeah, what else they should all know is that uh, um, Bella uh, Bonavita uh, told Helena to stay stay home and not leave the house really until he got back, and here she's going to go off to Spain. So so much for that idea. I mean, maybe she feels that now the ring is lost. Uh, the all these conditions have ceased to. Apply. All better off. Yeah. 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 Well, I guess also it's uh, sort of you know, aside from plot reasons, uh, and I guess it's easy to forget things when you're in, like sort of hearing about your brother being captured and sold, because clearly Manhurst does not does not have the most update news on the situation. Mm. Um, it's kind of That's yeah, important. <laughs> yeah. That's why Valabuena and uh, yeah, Valabuena separated them so that they can get on with their bits of the plot, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. there's no um, other reason really why they couldn't stay together. Yeah. Yeah, true. Um, yeah. We should then we should now move on to Act Four, yeah. Scene One. Enter mm. Ferrers and Petrosella. I never heard a fellow since my years taught me how to distinguish ill from good to talk in this strange key. Since my years taught me to distinguish ill from good, to talk in this strange key. How English this? What art thou in thy country? There, a man. What here? No better than you. you. Sorry, no better than you see. A slave. Whose? Uh, Valadora, his that hath redeemed me. Valadora's? Yes, I proclaim it. I that was once mine own. I'm now become his creature. I perceive your coming is to make me think you noble. Would you persuade me deem you a friend of a friend of God? For only such make men 
Are you a gentleman? Not here. Primal dejectedness. Captive to fortune and a slave to want. I cannot call these clothes I wear mine own. I do not eat, but at another's cost. This air I breathe is borrowed. Ne'er was a man so poor and abject. I have not so much in all this universe as a thing to leave, or a country I can freely boast is mine. In all the world I had but one true friend, that he is ravished from me. My essence, my being, is another's. What should I say? I am not anything, and I possess as little. Tell me that. Come, come. I know you to be no such man. You are a soldier, valiant and renowned. Your carriage tried by land and proved by at sea, of which I have heard full expression. No contradiction can persuade you less, and in this faith I am constant. A mere worm trod on by every fate. <laughs> Raised by your merit to be a common argument through Spain. And speech at prince's tables for your worth. Your presence, when you please to expose it abroad, attracts all eyes and draws them after you. And these that understand, uh, these that understand you, call their friends. And pointing through the streets, say, "This is he, this that brave and noble Englishman whom soldiers strive to make their president, and other men their wonder." This your scorn makes me appear more abject to myself than all the diseases I have tasted yet had power to asperse upon me, and yet, lady, I would say something, durst I? Speak it at once. And yet? Nay, but we'll admit no pause. I know not how my phrase may relish you, and loathe I were to offend, even in what's past. I must confess, I was too bold. Farewell. I shall no more distaste you. Sir, you do not. I do proclaim. You do not. Stay, I charge you. Or... As you say, you have been fortune scorned, so ever to pro so ever proved to woman. You charge deeply, and yet now I bethink me. As you are a soldier, an Englishman, and have hoped to be redeemed from your scorned bondage you sustain, have comfort in your mother and fair sister, renowned so blazed in the ears of Spain, hope to rebreathe that air you tasted first. So tell me. What? Your apprehension catched and almost was in chief. Lady, I shall. And in a word? I will. Pronounce it then. I love you. <laughs> Still, tis my misery thus to be mocked in all things. Pretty faith. I look thus to be laughed at. My estate and fortunes, I confess, deserve no less. That made me so unwilling to denounce mine own derisions. But alas, I find no nation, sex, complexion, birth, degree, but jest at want, mock at misery. Love me. I do, I do, and maugre fate, in spite of all sinister evil, shall. Now, I charge you by that filial zeal you owe your father, by the memory of your dear mother, by the joys you hope in blessed marriage, by the fortunate issue stored in your womb, by these and all things else that you can style with goodness instantly without evasion, trick or circumstance, nay, least premeditation, answer me. I bet you me or no. How speak you that? Without demur or pause. Give me but time to sleep on it. I pardon you no minute, not so much as to apparel. The least phrase you speak, speak in the shorter sentence. You have vanquished me at mine own weapon. Noble sir, I love you. And what my heart durst never tell my tongue, least it should blab my thoughts, at last I speak and iterate. I love you. Oh, my happiness. What wilt thou feel me still? Thou art not weary of making me thy may game to possess me? Of such Trevor's mighty magazine, not suffer me to enjoy it, tame with this hand, with that to get another. You are sad, sir. Be so no more. If you have been dejected, it lies in me to mount you to that height you could not aim at greater. I am yours. Thy lips that only witness it in air now with truth confirm it. 
I was born to it, and it shall out at once. Sir, you seem passionate, as if my answer pleased not. Now my death, for mine own tongue must kill me, noble lady. And, uh, yeah, basically, uh, in, in the interim, uh, he, they had kissed each other, and enter Valadora. You have endeared me to you, but my vow was ne'er so much with what, any of that what state or birth soever, till before the contract, some one thing I impose her. She to do it? Or if she fail me, in my first demand, I to abjure her ever. I am she that begs to be implied so. Name a danger whose very face would fright all womanhood and manhood put in trance. Nay, whose aspect would argue such as should but hear it told. But to the sad beholder, prove like those that gazed upon Medusa's snaky locks and turn them into marble. These and more, should you but speak, I do it. And swear to this? I vow it by my honor, my best hopes, and all that I wish gracious. Name it then, for I am in a longing in my soul to show my love's expression. You shall then. I'll do it as I am a virgin. Let it lie within mortality, I'll do it. You shall? I will, and that which appears in you so terrible to speak, I'll joy to act and take pride in performance. Then you shall. What, soldier, what? Love noble Valadora, and at his soonest appointment, marry him. What kind man? You must kill me. And myself with the same stroke. Oh, noble what? Englishman, thou now appearest a mirror. But in this, pray, sir, can you be serious? As I would in death unto my confessor. Then I am lost, now baser than this fellow termed himself to him that was on earth most miserable. Now I am become a vassal, nay despised. I that but once today thought myself rival for face and virtue to the peerless queen. Both these have prostituted to a slave to be more slave than he but shall he thus behold in me this passion to usurp triumph in my disgrace and boast abroad of this so poor a conquest no petroseller recollect, recollect thyself preserve thy honour though against thy spirit and where thy heart is sick complain thy heel let not thy grief thy seen grief please him home and retire why should you strive thus to undo one that's already conquered? Poor exile, oh, with what slight attribute shall I devise to give the expression? Thou, all that baseness thou hast termed thyself, thou looks on now. I should, I should whine and pule and weep, hang about thy neck, submit and kneel for grace, as if thou wert that brave man so reported. No, I am no such creature. Neither think I that there can be aught good in thee, saving this, which was the last, that thou hast plighted me to one more worthy, one whose very shadow I prize above thy being, who one whose actions were never taxed in anything save this, to ransom such a what thou knowest thyself. Him I'll both love and marry. Hence, depart. Oh, heaven, how far my tongue speaks from my heart. I would to a better dream, but then there were hope. I might, want, might be once awake and so see day, but night is lodged within me, night perpetual, darker than the Sumerian. All my lights have only been mere flashes that proceed tempestuous cracks under. Now it is time to rouse him from his slumber. Worthy friend, how have you sped this day in my behalf? As you would wish. Uh, you need not speak again. You have heard no more than what my ears have witnessed, in which you have used such fidelity. I needs most freely must acquit all debts twixt you and me, and there ingenuously confess myself in rearage. Oh, I still and evermore must owe you. But... If you would add a second to this courtesy, I should report you for the constant friend that ever strived to exceed in gratitude. Name it, I pray you, having one thing done, 
I am now at all, in at all things. Upon your honour. That which you have bought and paid for with your money. Uh, that no more, I charge you by our love. Why, I have done what I shall ever rue. I give it motion, I being new all for action. Only this, uh, for some occasions to myself best known, and which I now entreat you not inquire, but prosecute, uh, that priest shall marry us. Uh, for your disguise and all things fitting to it, leave it to my discretion to contrive, and this is all I enjoin. And this I'll do. And bind me to you ever. I'm in past half already. Why not up to the chin? And they exit. Yeah. What? That, that feels like it's an unfinished scene, kind of. Right. Almost. Not really. What on earth? What is Valador up to again? <laughs> like having this guy woo on your behalf. Terrible mm. idea. Mm. Because, of course, the, the principals are going to fall in love with each other. But Ferrer's, of course, is like this. He's so noble. Mm. He, 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 he's he, English. Yeah. Yeah. Well, hey. <laughs> yeah. He, he uses his he uses his influence over his inamorata to make her promise to do anything for him, and then says, "Okay, Mary, Mary Valadara," and she's too proud to say, "Oh, this makes me super unhappy." I, uh, um, so she says, "Okay, fine, fine. I'll marry him. I'll show you. I, I'll yeah. marry him." Mm -hmm. Uh, to preserve so her honor. Mm -hmm. Character for her. Um, but then what is her? It's like, I'm going to disguise you. And, and he, like, what? Uh -huh. uh, Lois, sorry. Yeah, well, I think I know where this is going. I mean, I think Valadora is going to show his incredible nobility uh, by using the disguise thing to get her to marry Ferrers, which yeah. is what she wanted to do. And then uh, they'll all be so grateful to him. Uh. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 that's my guess yeah. as well, but it's so around the house. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> why couldn't he just say, you you offered, you made the gesture, you tried to, to, to do what I wanted, but she doesn't love me, she loves you. I acquit you of your uh, of your, your bond. You guys get married because I know you love each other. He could just say that. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> But no, but it wouldn't be a play, I guess. It wouldn't Yeah, I was gonna say that 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 then then he's an act short, isn't he? You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and also we need to make time for um for uh Sintel and Pineda to come back to Spain and be chased by I mean chased as in like the verb, not chased as in like yeah. pursued. Yeah. 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 Um Yes, pursued by uh, Helena and Manhurst, yeah. which I'm, okay. I'm assuming is where the final scene is going. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. This plot can't resolve that much before that plot. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I guess. Mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. I do feel like the, the Ferris Petrocella writing though, was quite good, as opposed to the Bonas Bonavita Helen a bit like sort of I, I, in terms of courting and love yeah. match thing I don't know it's like Haywood is just kind of like okay I'll write this love scene if you want me to I don't know maybe yeah. maybe not I got nothing and any thoughts uh Ian maybe <laughs> uh, uh, I, I don't know I, I I was sitting there listening to it and going okay and then looking at the script and going okay why? Why are you <laughs> complicating things? Why? Yeah. To be fair, if this was a TV series, it would make total sense. You'd, <laughs> because you'd be able sense, to watch it back. Yeah. Okay. It, it would make absolute total sense as a TV series, which, you know, it it does kind of make the whole thing feels a little bit serialised mm -hmm. in, in terms of the way the scenes are placed, you know. Um I, I I kind of feel I kind of feel like I'm watching like thirty minute theatre, you know, <laughs> at, at each scene. So it's it it's yeah it's it's a it's a decent trope that they've used. Mm -hmm. I I completely agree with Lois that I, I think this is going to the old you will actually marry who you love thing in the end. Either that or it's going to turn out to be a complete tragedy and everybody's going <laughs> to die. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, maybe. Yeah. But I, I'm suspecting. I'm suspecting the former myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, I'm just trying to. And I guess it, if we go with that, then Isabella would have to. Queen Isabella, who's in the next scene, um, has to learn a lesson about like not oh, being yeah. proud or vain <laughs> or whatever. Yes. And she's, so, she's not a very yeah. apt pupil. <laughs> Mm. Yeah. 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 Maybe, so... maybe she'll prove the complication to the plot to propel it into another act. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe. Uh, you know. Yeah. Sorry. I mean, presumably Bonavita's still going to marry Helena, but there's Manhurst as well. I mean, who's he going to marry? He's not going to marry Rosara, surely. Is there anybody else around? But probably uh, Rosara, Rosara, actually. Rosara. It, it yeah. looks like because she, she does do the whole. Oh, it's yeah. A Dutch castle suits you. You're, I you're... think, like, yeah. Social rank wise, mm -hmm. that that that's a that's that's a fit. Uh -huh. Yeah, he's a more of an ordinary person. So unless he marries the clown, in which case it, well, that would be kind of cool. But obviously, no one marries the clown. Yeah, no. Oh yeah, true. Yeah, there is Ferris, but then that would be yeah. yeah. Anyway, yeah. I'm intrigued, but also yeah. Oh yes, and what is Valabuena going to do? <laughs> I mean, Val Val Valadora, uh, if he doesn't marry any yeah. of the available women, there's nobody and... left for him. Yeah, is he going to a monastery? Uh, well, yeah. he might turn into a priest. So, uh, yeah, yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. magic. Mm. I, I suppose we should go move on to Act Four, Scene Two, to see where we're going back. Well, oh, obviously, God. we're going back to Spain, where oh, there's, oh, there's more. Of <laughs> you know, yeah. totally Meanwhile, fine. at the royal court, <laughs> yeah, back to the the royal broadcast. Uh, enter Sebastian, Isabella, Centella, and Pineda with other followers and attendants. Centella and Pineda, we have long mourned for your absence. Had not our bright queen made us acquainted with the attend thereof, we had not took it of you to be you subject like you so unfriendly. Left us without leave, but you are nobly welcome. As the men have crowned us with a wreath of rarer worth than can the united births of Spain and Portugal maintain to us. They make us still supreme, and we by them find no competitor, the token that confirms infallibility, that beauty stands corrupted. Sacred Empress, behold the ring, the manner how she fell, how easily, and with what facility uh, she yielded almost at the first demand, uh, we shall relate at full. Forbear, Centella, for to vex him more, it shall be in his hearing. One of you, release him from the torment of his prison to endure a greater here. And, mighty prince, give me but leave, since he so proudly durst deprave your worth to spite, not all his grief and triumph in his willful misery. You speak of what is just and necessary in others to deter the like presumption. I pray, sir, reprehend him. You cannot be too bitter in his just reprehension. And enter Bonavida and his man, the clown, brought in by Pineda, who apparently exited and then came back again. See, he's come. Uh, we have sent to prove your mistress. And her constancy hath purchased my release. Is not so, madam? <laughs> we are put down. I feared if any clime could yield rarity to equal ours, it would be found in England. Uh, so I said. And, royal mistress, had you seen that face and made such proof as I did of her heart, you would esteem it no disgrace at all to honour her that's your sole paragon. Impudent slave! but will contain our spleen. Uh, but tis my grief to be excelled in both. To have failed in one has been had been less vexation. Oh, my fair Helena, thou hast filled my soul with rapture and released me from melancholy durance. Madam, what were they that made this happy trial and informed you that truth to make her with to make her this acknowledgement? And before Behold that truth to make her this acknowledgement. Behold them, these are the witnesses of my disgrace through Spain. They're noble lords by whose approved censures you, you have made her highness to confess 
hit, confess my injuries uh, at your return. In what plight did you leave, unequal lady? Uh, faith in health of body. Oh, be proud, my genius aunt. And lusty, wondrous lusty. Was she seen? Ah, uh, yes, seen and felt and heard and understood. Uh, we found her a noun substantive. Oh, my blood, why fliest thou from my heart? Yet she stood, and by herself too, when she was alone. But lighting upon company, she leaked. Poor prostitute, she fell. Then riddle me and let me know thy meaning. Uh, then, in plain, your mistress is a whore. Scintilla spake. And will make good. Uh, more, Bonavita, mine, my prostitute. Most base and mercenary, uh, bowing her lust beneath the price of gold for a few Spanish riles. Oh, my rage, whether wilt thou transport me, villain, dog, false and unworthy and noble style, scarce attribute of man. Oh, sir, uh, anon, I hope you, you have more patience. Patience, devil. Let it fly to the Antipodes, and we wrestle in wrath and fury. That base lie I'll stab with my steel to down thy throat and make thee swallow both. You are now heated. A little pause will cool you. King, tis false. Believe him not, believe him not great princess, tis unjust. Unless an angel should descend and speak, and with an instant straight produce that ring, it wins with me no credence. Know you that? Ha! This I do, and the where and wherewithal dare swear that that there's no faith in women. <laughs> what thinks he, great censorious Carper? Now that there's not one, give my allegation leave. I dare, I dare suspect even you, since she is fallen. Ha! What of us? that I have calumnized your fame and virtue, that I merit death, that I am now professed antagonist, saving your majesty to all your sex, that I am weary now the air I breathe, and should you grant it, madam, would not live, then I know better than a traitor am, and in the highest degree have injured these by most your sacred self. It for all these you do not... If for all these you do not mount me on the public scaffold, I will lay violent hands upon myself. I beg my merited doom, my sentence crave, which would severest rigour let me have. We limit thee two days for thy repentance, the third's thy death. My Helen approve base, mount thoughts towards heaven, you have on earth no place. He hath but what he merits. And, great prince, now boast yourself above Brutus, Collatine, or those most famous for their constant wives, and I myself, unequal and unpeered, may on the earth a blazing comet shine, seeming amongst other Terran soul divine. Our trusty friends and subjects henceforth live in our highest grace and trust how we will write you how, how we will write you that for zeal to us have injured been and in our apparent justice shall be seen. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Sorry, I just feel like this is one of those moments where you kind of like, are, aside from all the stuff that has happened, you maybe you don't put an interval here, but you kind of go to be continued. <laughs> um, just because it is a bit of a cliffhanger as to how... <laughs> Uh, you know, uh, obviously you could turn it into a cliffhanger, but we we kind of assume what's going to happen, right? Lynn, uh, you seem to have thought. Yeah, I, I was just going to say, where I think we're missing a stage direction when he says, I won't believe it without the, the ring. Um, yeah. And then she says, ha, 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 what thinks the great censorious Carper now? She must be showing him the ring at that point. Yeah. yeah. That's when he goes, yeah. I, I yeah that there, there's no there's there's no faith among women they're all yeah, they're all yeah. well know you that ah this yes quite yeah I, I that's what i kind of got from the context but yeah a stage direction might have helped mm. yeah yeah um. <laughs> uh, alan 
Yeah, I, I must admit, the more we look at this, the more it looks almost like a pantomime script of here's the outline of the action and the words, but there's mm -hmm. plenty of space in there for the actor's concern to improvise actions to make it work. Um, it does seem very raggedy as a piece overall. Mm. And I must admit, I'm, I do wonder whether the bailiff was knocking at the door for the rent. Mm. You know, and and the whole thing was a bit of a rush job. It, it feels unreviewed, if you know what I mean. Mm. It feels like <laughs> yeah. someone's just written it out and gone there. It, here's the first <laughs> draft, Sunshine. Make yeah. No workshopping here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I'm wondering yeah. if it's sort of like, um, you know, with Johnson, where you sometimes get plays where he has the entire script, but then you would only perform, you wouldn't perform all of it, naturally. You, hmm. you would kind Life's of... too bloody sure. <laughs> uh, but it's more the other way around, though. I mean, there's not enough here. And uh, I think there, there, there are some speeches that are really garbled. I mean, it may just be the terrible p p punctuation and the fact that uh, words are... Oh clearly um, co completely mucked up in some cases, but I think there may be also places where the speech is actually being given to the wrong person and uh, uh, and something has been left out, maybe a line is missing. I don't know, there, there's a lot of mess. I think this must be a manuscript that was handed to the printer without being gone over very well. Uh, yeah, I don't know. There's, see, there's a very, uh, what I found certainly, you know, obviously I'm coming to this first day, is with Bonavida, I'm finding it much easier to become tongue-tied than with either of the other two characters. Um, and I, I kind of think that it's the whole courtly language thing with whenever you're in a kind of Isabella Sebastian scene seems to be a little heightened um, and distinct from the the language of... Uh, of the others, not just in terms of, you know, verse or prose, but in, in terms of the actual way they're talking, it seems slightly more heightened. Yeah. With the with the with the royalty scenes. Yeah, and we not, had we had I'm similar um we had similar things yesterday in the previous se uh, session where um Balador was describing basically how he was injured by Ferrers before before Ferrers even came on. Uh, and he goes, you know, this whole thing about crimson cheeks and so on and so uh, uh, like sort of Petrocellus counter um, counterpoint is basically like, um, you know, if you wanted to, you could just have said, I got hurt. it, I bled. I have not been dressed for this wound. End of story. But he gets very fancy and high language-y, which is kind of, I don't know, yeah, yeah. Um, and I'm intrigued why he he kind of gets a bit more human as you go along, but then you still don't know what on earth he's up to. So mm. yeah, I know. Yeah, it's an awful bit of characterization. I I just don't know what we're supposed to make of Baladora. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. No idea. Yeah. I suspect he's kind of a mischievous Loki character. Maybe I don't know. Maybe not. Um, sort of switching sides. I mean, all the time. <laughs> Though Ferris did tend to become him in, in the previous scene where he kind of went, um, yeah, uh, I'm the worst of human beings. I cannot be happy without it being taken from me. Well, no, he's got reason, though, because he, he's totally indebted to Baladara. I mean, that's what he can't stand, is the, that situation. Uh, yeah. And also, I mean, P Petrocella really does drive everybody nuts. I mean, she just keeps flirting and, uh, you know, kind of uh, topping everything they say and insulting them. And I mean, naturally, Ferris has no way of knowing that she actually loves him. I mean, she, she acts more as if she despises him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, that's certainly, a, you know, that, that kind of, I don't, I don't like him, but I really do is, you know, I, I mean, yeah. You know, it, go, it, it, it even goes into the lovers in Commedia dell'arte, you know, the uh, mm -hmm. yes, 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 I want you, yes, but, but not, but not, but in, and the kind of in and out of that. So, it, you know, I can, in, in terms yeah, but... of characterization, it, it, make, it makes sense there were a lot of those, the, those characters were around in terms of yeah. plays. Uh, the young lovers in Moliere are, are like that as well. They, they they're they're gonna get together they they're meant to be but they can't 
but they can't get along. Yeah, it's yeah. I mean, Comedy Francaise is you know take, obviously took its inspiration from Commedia dell'arte and then kind of went a bit more and and had a bit uh, had you know a few rococo twirls on it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes, and, and the English actors had seen some Commedia dell'arte. I mean, there were some Italian actors in England, uh, though I don't know how much they got around. Um, yeah. But I'm, I'm to bring it back to the play. I like sort of Isabella is just like total revenge, revenge. Uh, I don't know. In, she's in revenge mode. She goes kind of, oh yes, uh, he don't tell him anything. I will do the great reveal. And then once she does, and Bonamita is like heartbroken and all that stuff, um, she has this speech at the end of the scene, which is kind of like, "Yes, you have all agreed. I am the most amazing." Mm -hmm. Which, like, they're probably going. She's cheated her way to the top. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't. Um. Any Any other thoughts about the scene or um the play thus far? I I know that. Ian is going to struggle with the play thus far because we've not really. I mean, we've I don't not know. There's a, a there's a decent chunk of plot in that, but in that part, that kind of that kind of makes me go, okay, I kind of see where we are. In in terms of each character and their their journey through the play, so it's, you know, the certainly. After the certainly for me after the first scene and the discussion after that, I I kind of felt more comfortable in going okay i know what i'm you know i know what this is i get what i i get where we are in terms of placing the play and placing each character's journey so it's i mean it, you know each character by that logic behaves as they behaves according to their type if it's you know if these are things that i can recognize in terms of uh in terms of plot type so you know there's there's almost a comfort in that in some ways yeah i guess sort of um you do have well like uh, you were saying type and i was thinking you know as you said uh, earlier commedia dell'arte where um you've got sort of character types rather than um characters themselves if that makes sense yeah um, yeah no i get i get you yeah, yeah. yeah. um lois yeah. sorry yeah uh, well well, the King's Men had been around for some time and had, you know, uh, they were pretty well known to everybody. So uh, some of these types are probably keyed to the specialties of different actors. Um, but uh, though I, I can't really work this out. I mean, it's the kind of thing that uh, 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 if you asked, well, the group uh, uh, around uh, Martin Wiggins who are working on precisely this, which which actors played which parts. Uh, you might get some interesting results. It might help explain some of this, but it really feels like just a whole string of um, little plots strung together and not very well. And I can't really make out why we need Manforth at all uh, in this thing. I mean, uh, is that his name? Anyway, the best best friend of... Uh, yeah, uh, you, Manhurst. Uh, well, you need him to me. bring Helena to Spain, of course. Yeah, but she could, she could get there some other way. I mean, she doesn't really have to have him there. I mean, they're... What? Uh, there just well, so many... of, of the time, an unaccompanied woman would be looked on a lot less favorably than uh, a woman that at least had a male accompaniment. But so, yeah, I, I see. in terms yeah. of plot, Mannheim, that bit with Mannheim is just meh. can't we just imagine that she got there? Yeah, <laughs> not quite. I mean, she's going to have Rosara with her anyway, so she's, yeah. she's got someone to accompany her, and she could probably pick up a servant on the way I and mean, it's very odd that she doesn't have any others in her house anyway but uh, yeah there, there's just uh, uh, I don't know this thing is certainly not working for me uh, I'm beginning to wonder whether there'll be a surprise ending when Sebastian suddenly asserts himself and banishes the queen or something grow the bear. I mean he needs to do something and uh, we could even have one of these I've been testing you all along you know for the past three years or whatever and uh, you know you really have failed this test and so goodbye <laughs> Yeah. I mean, it's it's not improbable, is it? In in mm. in terms of uh, uh, of plays, you could, I mean, a, a nice big Deus Ex Machina could suddenly land as well. So yeah, yeah true. Um, Lynn, any any other uh, thoughts about the play, the plot, the you know, yeah. I really, I really want to like this. Um, 
And I I don't usually mind um oh, you know, unlikely scenarios and sort of weird behavior from the characters. If I've sort of bought into that's what the, the game that the the um play is playing. Um um I am I'm a big fan of, of romance and I'm willing to forgive a lot of weirdness if um if I have successfully sort of entered the world of the romance and it's kind of not happening. Um and I can't explain that. I think maybe it's because each I mean you don't a romance uh, you know what rules you're buying into with a romance, don't yeah. you? I think each one follows a slightly different romance, if you see what I mean, a slightly different set of rules. And so they don't necessarily work overarchingly in a whole plot as one rather than three separate yeah yeah things i you know may, may, maybe that's one thing that accounts with the disparity in language with the isabella scenes it, that that's kind of drawn from a diff, a slightly different tradition or something i don't know i mean i obviously i'm no expert on this thing so mm. Yeah, I'm just wondering also whether it's because we've been stopping and starting. So it's kind of like if you see it at pace, maybe that would make a difference or not. I, 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 I'm, I don't yeah, know. It, I think that would. Though sure that... it would be hard as him to believe. You have to believe from the beginning that all the characters are sort of either detestable or lovable, uh, I think. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's kind of. Yeah, I don't know. I, I worry at pace if it had just become a bit garbled and difficult to understand. Yeah. Because of all the all these swift changes. So I don't know. I I, I wait to learn. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um Alan, any other any final thoughts about the, the play thus far? I mean until we see how it resolves in the next 30, uh, 20 pages or so. It's difficult. I mean, part of the problem we've got is that you've got at least three different locales. You've got the you've got the court, which is the scenes with uh, Sebastian and Isabella. You've got uh, um, Petrocella's residence, mm. and then you've got the English scenes. Um, and it's not clear in the stage directions which are pretty um, vague at the best of times, where you are at any time, there's obviously time elapsing along the way. So it's breaking all the rules of unity of place, unity of time. And it's just, as I say, it just feels to me almost like this was written as a skeleton mm. of, yeah, we're going to chuck this at the established company of actors who've all got their standard shtick of yes you do the noble soldier so we want what you did last week in that other play mm -hmm. with subtly different words yeah um i mean it's quite interesting we haven't seen that many um plays that i can recall where we've had two really quite unpleasant women Mm -hmm. lead roles mm -hmm. you know both Isabella and Petrocella are both you know candidates for Queen Bitch um, and then you've got these other bits like that riff that uh, Manners threw in earlier which just seemed to be oh how many dirty gags can we cram into one sequence mm -hmm. um, you know because that'll keep the groundlings chuckling along Um. It just feels messy and I think as Ian said, it, it's almost mm -hmm. as if it needed a script editor, mm -hmm. um, which maybe was done by the original company. And yeah, okay, this is what he's given us. Now now we're going to just take these ideas and run mm -hmm. with it with these pre-existing riffs that we've already got. Yeah. I, I'm now wondering if it's more a compilation, like sort of, because we've had, I mean, Fair, the fair maid plays and the age plays and everything predate this, right? So, yeah, so you would have char characters that people know, um, types that people know, actors that people know. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess you would 
sort of have that kind of element. Uh, though this feels more like a high school thing, like you could just stage it in a high school. Uh, oh, I, I, give... I, I think a youth theatre group would probably have fun with it. Yeah. But I'm, I'm just thinking, I think I've got a recollection somewhere that Robert said before that Haywood has got his name attached to mm. a very yeah. significant number yeah. of plays. And yeah. this is late in his active career. Yeah. So he hasn't got the excuse of being a novice. Mm -hmm. And I, I wonder if it's almost, oh, yeah, OK, fine. I'll just turn the handle on the sausage machine a few more times and see what comes out. Yeah. Yeah, um, it, it, that that is a possibility. Sorry, Lois, you got your hand up. I... Oh well, I just got to say. I mean, I'm very fond of Haywood normally, but and he, yeah, he did say in the uh, preface to one of his plays that he'd had a hand or at least a finger in something like 200 plays, uh, which is nothing actually compared to some of the Spanish dramatists who seem to have written over a thousand. I don't know quite how they did it, um, but uh, yeah, so uh, it is quite possible that. Uh, and he was pretty old, I think, by this time. I mean, this is toward the end of his life. He may just have been really tired, not feeling terribly well, just threw this together and then thought, you know, you actors can, you know, cut what you like and, you know, throw in a few bits if you want. Something like that. Yeah. Uh, Ian, you had thoughts as well. No, that that was kind of where I was going with it, to be honest. Mm -hmm. I'm intrigued and also curious to see what happens. Um, on that note, since our other uh, readers had to disappear a bit early. Yes. Um, I would like to thank our wonderful readers for their wonderful reading. <laughs> My further honor still.